Good day everyone, welcome to our technical drawing tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you could send your email to AutoCAD alive at gmail.com. We proceed with the construction of a regular hexagon. Our subtopic, regular hexagon given the distance across its corners and across its flats. In this section of our drawing sheet, we're going to construct a hexagon using the across corners method and on this side, the across flats method. The example tells us to construct a regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F given the distance across its corners is 80 millimeters and construct a regular hexagon G, H, I, J, K, L given the distance across its flats is 80 millimeters. This construction method can be done swiftly and wonderfully with the use of T-square but for persons who don't have a T-square I went ahead to use this new method that I'd like to introduce. You could take your ruler or your set square or straight edge and draw a construction line. I went ahead and I prep it just so that uh, we could move quicker in our drawing in this tutorial. And this horizontal line will replace the straight edge that our T-square would have given us. And we label that horizontal line X, Y, and this horizontal line is going to be our reference line. Our center line is required for the drawing, and so our horizontal center line labeled CL is going to be drawn or constructed rather parallel to our reference line XY and so we are going to use the parallel line method for the construction and I went ahead and I prepped that drawing before to save us time in our video. If you need to know or refresh as to how to construct parallel lines please see the parallel line construction tutorial. In order for us to move on from there, we need to draw our vertical center lines. So for the across corner method, we are going to slide our T-square in position, and I prefer to use my 45 degree set square, so this is one method we could use. A bit time consuming, because you really need to take your time and place your set square on that line X, Y, and then draw your vertical center line. With that done, we will label this point of intersection O. Now, the same thing needs to be done in the across flats method, and this is the other way that you can do it. You place your set square, your 30, 60 degree set square, or 45 degree set square if you so desire, and you place your other set square up against your 30, 60 degree set square. Now I use that set square obviously because it is longer than the 45, 90 degree set square. This allows me to easily position my set square against my reference line in order for me to draw my vertical center line in this instant. Voila. So the latter method, that what I just did, is what will be used throughout our construction. The information given to us tells us that the across corner method is, requires a center or a distance of 80 millimeters and the distance across flats is 80 millimeters, both being the same and a circle required. We are going to let the radius of our circle be equal to 40 millimeters. Why 40 millimeters? 80 millimeters being the distance across is going to also be used as the diameter of the required circle. Half of the diameter is 40 millimeters. And so we are going to ensure that our radius is 40 millimeters. 40 millimeters is equivalent to 4 centimeters and as you can see it is not and so we're going to open up our compass until we achieve that measurement or distance required. Having done so, we place our compass point at our point of origin labeled O and we inscribe our first circle. Now for the purpose of our tutorial and for visibility obviously, I'm going to shade the circle so it can be seen properly on our tutorial drawing. 
The same does not necessarily have to happen for you because I guess you draw this once and you could you should be able to see this circle. All right. And so we ensure that our radius is the same for our second circle for the across flats method. And voila. Again, darken our circle so that it can be visible on our tutorial video. With both circles drawn, and I'll focus now on the across flats method, we are going to use our compass, establish a radius, which is half the diameter, 40 millimeters, and we're going to use that point of intersection with the circumference and our vertical center line as our first center. And we're going to inscribe an arc in the first and second quadrant, the first and second quadrant of our circle. Then we move to the bottom of that point of intersection of our using our vertical center line and the circumference of our circle, that point of intersection right here, and the same radius. We're going to inscribe an arc again, this time on the third and fourth, the fourth and third quadrant of our circle. It's always good to double check to ensure that the radii are the same. All right, our next step would be to label the required points. So this would be A, B, C, D, E and F. Our next step, join our points and you should do that with construction lines until you're satisfied that the drawing is done neatly and correctly, then you go ahead with object lines. So you join A to B, B to C, C to D, carefully placing our straight edge ruler or set square, whichever you are using, up against the points of intersection so we could have our line drawn properly. No need to rush. Take your time. Perfection takes hard work. And a degree of patience. Then you join point E to point F. And finally point E to point B. So far my drawing is looking nice and neat. Satisfied with it. I'm going to darken. The sides of my regular hexagon. Okay, so the across corner method is set, and now we move to the across flats method. For the across flats method, we must use tangents to this circle. So again, this time, this method more than the previous, we really need the use of a T-square or this method that I'm now showing you, where your set square replaces the T-square. You also need a 30, 60 degree set square. In this case, my 30 degree set square, broken hair, but that's okay because it is still in one place. It's, in, it's still whole and it can still be used. 
So our 30, 60 degree set square will be used to draw tangents at an angle of 60 degrees to our horizontal center line. And you slide your set square as close as possible until you see the circumference appear like a dash, a short dash. And you simply draw your tangent to that part of the circle. Remember, a tangent does not intersect or pass through the circle. If it passes through, it's not a tangent. It must touch the circle. And obviously, if it does not touch the circle, it is not a tangent. And so you slide your set square to the other side. So that was the first. This is the first quadrant right here. This is the second. So placing our set square like this allows us to hit or to draw a line against the second and fourth quadrant. So we move to the fourth quadrant and we draw our tangent there. Again, we need only the 60 degree angle side of our set square. And we move now to the first quadrant to draw our tangent. Double check our set square, ensuring that it is still up against our reference line and the tangent drawn at the first quadrant. Correct. Turn our set square to the fourth, sorry, the third quadrant, and you draw it up. You pull it up close enough to the circle so that you can get your tangent drawn. Now we need our horizontal tangents. Our set square, our 45 degree set square is already in position. It is already holding the place for our reference line. And so by placing our 30, 60 degree set square on this side, it allows us to slide our 45 degree set square upward. And if you need more practice with this, you can check out our tutorial on dividing a line into equal parts or into a ratio of parts as well. The same method is used. Okay, so carefully we place our set square up against our reference line XY. And if we add a T square, the reference line would be the T square, so we just simply slide our T square upward. And we slide our set square now up to that tangent, holding our set square in place. Draw your horizontal tangent. We proceed. Of course, you notice it shifted, so you want to keep this set square in place to keep the original marking. Place the next one below, and if you just want to double check that it's still accurate, you move to your reference line, and then you move back up. Perfect. Then you slide your set square up to the top of our circle, and that top part of our circle, at that point, we draw our horizontal tangent. Now with both, or rather all your tangents drawn, we notice that they intersect each other. These points of intersection, we are now going to label G, H, I, J, I notice I used L here, so I will change L to K, and this would be point L. Oh, well, I actually have Q already, so this is going to be changed. It's better if you erase it, but to save time, we'll just cross it out. Let's use, oh, I have already Q. All right, so J, K, this would be point K. And this is point L. Okay? 
Now that we have our points identified, our next step would be to darken our line segments that form the sides of our hexagon. 9GL, or rather line segment GL, side GL, side GH, side H, I, then we move to side I, J, over to side J, K, And then side K, L. And if you have any bits of letter, you could just simply blow it away from your drawing. That would help keep your drawing neat. Or if you have a brush, you could do the same. Use the brush instead, which is a much better practice. And you, you darken line J, sorry, line K, L. And now that we have all six sides of our hexagon, darkened we have come to the conclusion of our drawing please practice as much as you can you can change the diameter change the letters for the points and practice as much as you can so that you could get better with this construction method for a hexagon thank you for viewing have a wonderful day